Zotero and reference management software more generally are very useful tools for writing research articles, uh, theses, study reports, or any other text that contain in-text citations, and then uh, have this, this reference list or bibliography at the end of the document. So these are a huge time saver. However, uh, they can also be a bit of, bit of a pain if you don't know how to use the software properly, and you might end up with weird citations or missing citations and all kinds of little problems if you don't use the software the way that is intended. Also, it is possible that if you write with somebody else who does not know, uh, does not use this software, they might uh, mess up the document and then uh, you need to fix it. So understanding how you fix broken citations is a useful skill. I'll go uh, through my workflow in this video. So this document is just something that I typed and we have lots of citations to Eisenhower just to demonstrate some of the problems that you might have. This is something that I might have gotten from a co-author or from a student, but this has much more, much more problems than a normal document would have. So normally I have one or two problems, this has maybe five. So let's take a look at what these problems are. Uh, we can see here that there's Kathleen and Eisenhardt. So we only cite one Eisenhardt in the paper. So this name shouldn't be here. The reason why the name appears is because of this ambiguation. If uh, you cite two different authors with the same last name, let's say we cite John Smith and Tim Smith, we need to uh, indicate which Smith we are talking about. So we would add T Smith and J Smith into the citations, and that is the appropriate way of citing. So we would cite the authors with the first name in it, uh, first names first initial, but here uh, the system uh, does not work properly because it's disambiguating unnecessarily. The reason why it's disambiguating unnecessarily is that we have Kathleen Eisenhardt's name uh, stored in three different ways in our reference database. So we have K period M period, K M period, so there's no period, and we have Kathleen M period and Zotero does not know that these are, are the same person. And we might have a person who just uses K, and then we might have a person who uses Kathleen. So it is uh, technically possible that K Eisenhardt and Kathleen Eisenhardt would be different people, but in this case, we know that this is the same person. So that is problem number one. The uh, problem number two is that this 1989 here, uh, we have two articles, so we have a uh, better stories, better constructs, building theories from case study research. So, so we don't know which one this is referring to. So it needs to be disambiguated. Problem number three is that there's Borgos and Eisenhower 1988 in text, but, not, but that's missing from the reference list. Uh, the final problem is that we have this weird citation here. So we have Eisenhower 1989, Eisenhower 1989. This is not a valid citation according to the APA uh, standard, so we should have Eisenhardt comma a year now one year two instead of Eisenhardt twice because it's the same author. So uh, how do we fix these problems? We need to first understand uh, where the problems are or what the problems are, and to do that we need a bit more information. So whenever uh, you start troubleshooting a document, the first thing that you should do is go to the work preferences, and then uh, go to the view tab and set field shading to always, and I have this always, that's my setting. So I have this uh, word set up this way <clears throat> always, but I turn it off because it's off by default and that's how many people like to have it. But I prefer to have lots of information when I write, so I have all of these, these formatting marks on as well. Now, we can see a couple of issues. Uh, the first issue is that this Burgos and Eisenhardt here is just text, so it's not done with Zotero. So everything that is inserted with Zotero is now uh, uh, with, with this gray color, and this is just something that somebody has typed here. So because it has been just typed, then uh, it's not managed by Zotero, and therefore it's not included in the list of references. Another interesting thing is that we see is here, and uh, <clears throat> this is a case, uh, normally when you use Zotero, uh, Zotero only manages the things within the parentheses. So we'll take a look at uh, what's the problem specifically here in a moment. But let's let's go to the next step. So the next standard step is to uh, go to the Zotero tab and click refresh. 
and this refresh causes Zotero to reapply the citation style and it will also uh, go through all the citations and, and see if they have been edited by hand. And uh, it highlights this, this weird citation and points out that originally K.M. Eisenhardt, K.M. Eisenhardt, 1989, 1989. And uh, we don't want to have these manual edits. If we edit the citation, we do that through the Zotero software. We don't do that by typing or taking or deleting stuff in Word. So we will click no, we want to erase always the changes. So every time in all of these dialogues, there is there is no case where you would ever want to press yes. You always want to click no because uh, Zotero manages the citations. You don't edit them manually. So we'll click no to that one. This also has to be manually edited, and now we can see that the edit has been informative. So so someone added this C here and the original does not have the C. So, so we want to add that, that C to the first citation. If you have a large number of citations, it's a good idea to make notes of, of what, you, what you need to change, because we will go through all the citations with this refresh, and then we will apply all the changes. And if you need to change like 10 citations, then uh, you need to uh, make notes. One thing that I sometimes do is take a screenshot so I would take a screenshot of, of this, this citation here, like so, and then uh, I have it there. So that's my original, and then uh, I will need to uh, fix that. So, but now I just know that I will need to add C into the first citation. Oh, all right. So, so we add the C here because that's what we wanted to have. We got to add a citation, and instead of typing into the C, uh, citation, uh, we add the C prefix uh, through Zotero, and that produces the same outcome, but now it's done properly. This C is not typed by yourself, by you, but rather it's managed by Zotero. So if we type something like here, uh, and then we refresh, uh, then Zotero will detect that we, we have manually edited that citation, and it offers to uh, to change those edits. So let's see. It offers to, to eliminate those edits, so we will eliminate the edits. Now, the, the next thing that we do is uh, to, to do the low-hanging fruit. So we can see here, Borgos and Eisenberg is missing, so we will just, just add that. So I've copied the name of the authors, and I'll use the keyboard shortcut, paste the name of the author, and then uh, we will uh, go through and, and see this is what there is the Eisenhardt and Burgois, and uh, it is uh, this one. So that's the more complete. I have a duplicate, but this is an uh, incorrect case, in case, so it's title case, and we want the sentence case here. So we'll, we'll add that citation and then. Uh, We'll take out the uh, the citation that somebody typed, and then now now this is this is uh, fixed. All right. <clears throat> then the next step that I often do is is to check uh, a switch to uh, a number style, and uh, the number style instead of the parenthetical author year style allows you to find uh, duplicate citations, and it allows you to also find. Uh, citations that uh, are not properly updated by Zotero. And we can see here that we have building case study, uh, uh, theories from case study research twice, and we don't want to have that. The reason why it's included twice is that we might have two copies of it and they're not properly linked to be, be copies, or it is possible that we, we cite from two different libraries. So if I have a co-author, I might have a group library and then I have a personal library and it is possible that one of these is from my group library, another one is uh, from the personal library. So we need to find the, the duplicate entries of this case study research. The way to do that is to go to document preferences and we take a look at number style. I have this, this IEEE, this is the number style that I like, but any, any number style will do. And uh, we, we change the number style. To number style. So now it's not parenthetical, 
and uh, we can take a look at okay so we have <coughs> here building case studies uh, building theories from case study research this is the volume and, and uh, issue is here so that's complete and uh, this does not have the volume and issue so this is incomplete but this, this is a duplicate so we can see that uh, okay so we have a uh, number six here and then number three is missing now why the number three is missing is that this this looks uh, like a weird citation so it's not updated for some reason and uh, we need to fix that before we start fixing the duplicate what we will do, uh, this, what, why this, this uh, happens is that someone has used the, uh, the Soveros citation editor. So this is a, a kind of like a legacy feature, which is a bit difficult to access, but it is available because it was included in the early days of Sofero and maybe some users find it useful. So we will go and we'll edit this citation and we'll click on, on edit. And then uh, there is uh, this, this classic view. and uh, the classic view is an, an older dialog for inserting citations. So this is the one that you should use, but there is this one where you can browse for citations. And uh, this was uh, the way you added citations in, in Zotero before they had this, this quick insert dialog. And now there is citation editor here. It might be hidden, but because this is now edited, it is shown. And uh, we can see that somebody edited this citation manually. So if we type something here, and uh, we, we click on OK, then that will be added to the citation. What we'll do is we delete the manually added thing and uh, then uh, we'll click on OK. And now Zotero warns us that the citation will be blank, but it's not actually the case. It will not be blank, it will be numbers. So we'll, we'll click on OK and now we, we have this citation again being managed by Zotero instead of being uh, manually typed. Now back to fixing the duplicate. Number three is the duplicate and number six is the duplicate. So we can see that our number three citation is the, is the more complete. And so we'll just, we'll edit this citation because that's the duplicate and we'll, we'll edit it. And uh, it's the first, first one that is the duplicate. And we will delete that. We can verify that it's actually this one by clicking on it. So building theories from case study research. We will delete and we will re-add it. Let, yeah, <laughs> let's type a bit more. And uh, we have now a few copies of the, the Eisenhardt article. The reason why it was duplicate is that this is cited, one of these is cited from a group library, another one is cited from my library. So we can see that there is a, there's the same article from my library. So this is a, a building case study, a building theory from case study research. We have this uh, SBL group library, uh, building theories from case study research, and then another copy in another group library. When you uh, fix these duplicate citations, you should always cite they are the version, the, the version of the article that you have cited before. So it shows that we have cited building theories from case study research. We should cite the same version instead of any other of these versions. This is of course not a problem if you don't use group libraries, but I would guess that the many researchers do. And because of that reason, there is a problem. There can be also a problem if you have two people working on the same document and both citing Eisenhardt. 1989 from their personal libraries instead of citing it from the citation that is already in the document. So we will choose the version that is already in the document and that will uh, fix the problem. So now we have only one copy of building theories from case study research. And if you want to understand from which uh, libraries these are cited, you can, you can do it here. So we can see this is from the SBL library and this is from, uh, from my library. So these are from, from different libraries, but it doesn't make a difference uh, because they're different citations. If you have the same citation from different libraries, then it appears as a duplicate in the list of references. Generally, what I recommend is that when you write yourself, always cite from your library and your library only. If you write with co-authors, always cite from the library that you, you share with co-authors and never from, from my library. Of course, there are exceptions to the rule 
like if you have a citation that says it just once and it's just in your text, you don't have it in the group library, then it's completely okay to cite it from your library instead of using the group library. So, so we'll do that. The next thing that we'll do is it switches back to our normal citation style. So we'll go to document preferences, we will go to our APA 7, we'll click OK, and then our <clears throat> we'll check that everything is okay. So we have now uh, Kathleen Eisenhard, uh, spelled K-N, and uh, we have uh, this, this C appears correctly. Uh, this is disambiguated properly. And uh, we would need to add here the name of Eisenhard because that was included in the citation and now we need to have it in the text. And uh, we still have uh, some problems now we have individual citations that we need to fix still, so this is capitalized incorrectly. And we will need to go to the citation and uh, we go to the Eisenhardt and Martin, uh, we go edit citation and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll go to open my, in my library. And then uh, it opens it here, we right click, file case, uh, sentence case I mean, and then uh, we will fix the citation and uh, uh, the correct capital is there, and we, we click on it, and then that fixes the citation. And what we can do finally is to do refresh just to make sure that everything is okay, and everything is okay, and now this document has been fixed. So let's take a look at the workflow. They are, the workflow is that we first toggle field codes on to see what comes from Sotero and what's typed manually. Then we refresh citations. Now for every manually added citation, make note of the modifications up and apply the modifications to Sotero. For example, if we have this, this uh, C typed manually, we will add it uh, through the insert citation dialog. Then uh, we replace manually typed citations with Sotero. So this is the, uh, the Eisenhower and Burgos article. Locate all duplicate entries in bibliography. We have the case study research article cited twice. Then we switch to number style to locate the duplicate references in text. And then we find every reference that did not update and eliminate. Uh, and when we change uh, that by eliminating uh, changes done with the citations editor and classic view. Then we fix back to author year style. We fix author names if there are any problems anymore. So normally it should be first name spend it, uh, uh, spread out fully like we have here. And then the first initial, not for example, K period, N period, or K without period, N period, like we have in the first version. And then we fix the capitalization for our article. So this is the workflow for fixing our citations. This document contained every possible problem that I could think of. Normally going through the workflow when I get a broken document takes a couple of minutes to fix everything, and then we're good to go. Uh, one good idea is to, to keep on fixing the document as you get the problem. So if you have a, uh, a document with very inconsistent use of, of reference management software that has hundreds of references and then you want to fix it in the end, then uh, that's a lot of work. And it's also difficult to keep track of all, all manual edits. So it's a good idea that when you get a document, uh, you go through any possible errors when you get it from a co-author and then you fix them right away instead of waiting at the end.